for me, it was kind of a letdown, unfortunately, because I had such a great career in high school and then I got to college and wanted to do so many different things, accomplish so many goals. But unfortunately, I was stricken with injury um, immediately. It tore my transverse abdominis as a freshman, was out for the season, and then had a bunch of hamstring injuries and ended my career as a junior in college with a uh, UCL injury to my thumb. So wasn't the best, but I, I learned a lot in that process of knowing how to be a more effective team player. I did. So this industry has even provided me with so many different opportunities and experiences that were great despite the uh, injuries. But I've always wanted to work in this industry because, especially college athletics, because I just wanted to give back and I've always wanted to dedicate uh, my time and my knowledge to an industry that gave so much to me. And if I can help the next generation out, that is my goal. Time management and knowing how to multitask. Um, as a student athlete, I had to balance a full-time class schedule of 18, sometimes 21 credits, and then still go to probably two and three practices out of the day. And it taught me how to be organized and again, just manage my time effectively so I can make sure I accomplish everything that my day requires of me. For one, I'm able to share my experiences and hopefully stop them from going down a path that I went down. Um, I'm able to help them in their life as not just a athlete, but also as a student and just help create a well-rounded individual by the time they graduate after four or five years. So uh, WIT was actually one of my last schools that I visited. When I first uh, came to WIT's campus, I actually came to the golf tournament for a different school in our conference, uh, which was kind of ironic. So I met one of the girls in the parking lot, and I had actually gone to high school with her. And she's like, hey, maybe you should come visit us. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm actually here for another school, but we'll see. So I ended up visiting the other school. I won't, I won't mention who they are. And I uh, didn't really enjoy it. And so I was kind of in this, like, oh, what am I going to do stage? And Coach Roop uh, from Wittenberg reached out to me. And so my mom and I drove up. I'm actually from Cincinnati, so it's only like an hour away. Uh, we drove up. And I remember driving off the campus after my visit. And my mom and I looking at each other and saying, this is the place that you're going to go. Um, it was Coach Roop. It was the girls. It was the campus. I love the small school atmosphere. Um, I like the idea of being in a classroom with a handful of kids, not hundreds. Um, the golf course is beautiful. So it just felt like when I was on campus, it was where I was meant to be. Um, so I made the decision right there. I didn't visit another school and went to it. I honestly meant everything. I mean, I get chills thinking about it now because it's just, it was who I was. It was like my identity. I mean, we were a successful team. We were all involved on campus. So I felt like we were just like a melting pot of everything that was wit, which was pretty cool. Um, I mean, I love golf. I love being competitive. And so being on a team that was so competitive just fueled the fire a little bit. I mean, we were nationally ranked, competed at nationals. It just made going to class, going to practice, going to compete like even more exciting. Um, so being a wit golfer, being an athlete on campus was just it meant, it meant the world to me. And I still think about it on the daily now. It kind of made, it, it shaped me to who I am today, definitely. I mean, it, it was huge. So when I first came into it, I didn't even know I was going to play golf in college. I was deciding between golf and softball. I mean, I wasn't a very established high school golfer. Um, and I know I was coming into a team that was really good. They were already nationally ranked. They were competitive. Um, and so I knew I was going to have to work hard because I'm not someone that doesn't like to play. So I was going to have to work hard to get into the starting lineup. So I think having girls on the team that were so competitive just amplified all of our work ethic just to continue to get better. Because golf is an interesting sport. Like you're competing um, on other teams, right, for starting spots. Um, but golf is like you're – I need to qualify to be on the team and it's just like a number system. So you got to shoot a score to get into, to get onto the team, if that makes sense. 
So not only were we competing weekly against other teams, we were competing weekly against each other because someone could slip into your spot and you didn't get to play the next week. Um, And while sometimes that fostered interesting relationships, just being competitive, I think we all knew that it was just making everyone better, um, which kind of brought us the success that it did. Um, again, it kind of was every, it was like the foundation of everything, right? So when you came in, I wasn't a part of a sorority. You never tried to be a part of a sorority. So the girls were kind of my sorority, I guess you would say that. They were just family. Um, so you kind of come into WIT uh, as an athlete, knowing that you're going for academics as well. But then you start to dabble in other things that WIT has to offer, like being in SAC or working for your professor. And so I felt like WIT kind of made everyone a well-rounded person. You were able to be involved in so many different things while also competing that I think is completely different than another campus could offer you. So, I mean, you could have two campus jobs, be in SAC, be on a team, and and still get your academics done um, all at the same time, which I thought was pretty cool. And all the girls on the team were involved. So it was just like everyone was everywhere, and then we all came together to to be a golf team. Oh, for sure. I think I I do every day. I just think back to where I came from individually and where we came from as a team when I first came in and how much work we put in to be successful. Um, And it is a daily work, right? Your workouts, your academics, your traveling, everything. And at the time, it might not feel like it's paying off, but it always did in the end. And so I think that was a lesson that I continue to take into now, especially because I'm still competing, was... um, you got to keep working, whether it's doing one thing a day, two things a day, like you're just, you're just always getting better. And I think that's what WIT and being on the WIT team taught me was just do something one day, one time a day that makes you better than you were yesterday. Um, and it'll take you to some pretty, pretty cool places. I think it's confidence. I think confidence is huge. Um, I feel like being a female athlete is empowering. I mean, you just feel like you're powerful. You, you can do anything because you, you go through so much adversity um, on teams, not playing, trying to win a spot, kind of having to foster relationships with the girls on the team and competitors. And I feel like your confidence just grows and you, you grow into who you're supposed to be as a person. Um, so I feel like confidence is, is huge. And, and building those connections and building and fostering relationships is also huge which I think is a great thing to take off of the field, the court, the course, whatever you played on when you graduate was that you were a part of a team, um, a successful team, hopefully, and it should empower you to be successful in whatever else you decide to do. I would say enjoy it. Um, I know the time right now is kind of weird with COVID and not being on campus or not getting full seasons in, but it goes so fast. Um, you look back and I'm almost four years out now and like where did the time go Um, so enjoy it get involved too like I said I think WIT is great for fostering well-rounded people so be on the sports team be in a sorority fraternity be involved in the academic world of WIT because you're able to do that um, with the environment that you have I also said um, just believe in yourself and work hard because anything is possible Um, like I said before just do one thing a day that you think is going to make you better Um, and in the end I promise it'll pay off. Wimber got on my radar uh, because I wanted to play women's basketball. Um, I'd considered going to a a bigger state school prior to that. I'm from Indiana. Um, So I went to the campus for a visit for to see the basketball team and um, felt immediately at home, not only with the teammates who showed me around, but um, just everybody on campus. I'm sure a lot of people give this response when they ask why Wittenberg, but you know, everybody says hi and smiles. Um, and I know once I got there and was a student there, I also made a point to say hi to, um, you know, prospective students. Um, amazing. I, I loved every part of it. Um, that's why I was there for four years, um, on the team for four years. 
really couldn't replace the experiences and relationships that I formed um, just on the basketball team itself, not to mention the whole university. Um, as a player, it was really tough just because, you know, playing college basketball was my dream. Um, I will say that my teammates and coaches were everything to me throughout that, you know, from freshman year all the way to the end, um, I was riddled with knee injuries. So it was kind of a never ending battle for me, but obviously, you know, sticking with it for the four years speaks volumes to how supportive and how much I, how supportive my teammates and coaches were, but how much I enjoyed being a part of the program. It definitely gave me a, obviously a different perspective, um, but it gave me a lot more appreciation for my coaches at when I was a college player. Um, you know, you don't realize how much work and effort goes into it. And there's two or three people on the coaching staff trying to make sure, you know, 18, 20 girls are, um, well, women are performing not only athletically to their best ability, but most importantly, academically. Um, and it was also really neat, just beside the fact that I got to be on the coaching staff while um, a, a teammate, a former teammate of mine was a senior um, when I was, when I had been a senior, she had been a freshman. So it was kind of cool to um, grow in our relationship, just the two of us that way. Um, definitely providing an amazing network and just giving you relationships with people that you know you can always fall back on, you know, former teammates, of course. Um, also, form other former friends that were um, both athletes and students there, former coaches, even professors I still talk to to this day. And just giving you, even if you don't know somebody, personally that went to Wittenberg, it gives you a great way to connect with people professionally and it's definitely opened doors for me. I think that both as an athlete and as a coach, it definitely helped my confidence level as a person. I think in general, it's harder for females to uh, be empowered and to be confident in who they are and what they want to achieve. Um, I was definitely, when I, when I was a student, um, like a freshman coming into Wittenberg, I was super shy and reserved and just the, the entire Wittenberg experience, but especially so as an athlete, I was able to come into my own person and be assertive and be confident and go after the things that I want, which has obviously, you know, carried me throughout my time there and now as a professional. One, embrace the moment. You guys are in a really amazing time of your lives that you're going to figure out so many things about yourselves. And um, again, try to really embrace the, the trials and tribulations you're facing now because they are going to positively impact you down the road, even if it doesn't seem like it um, right now. Um, so what the main thing that drew me to Wittenberg was probably the campus. Um, I had my mind set on going somewhere else because I thought Wittenberg was way too close to home. I was like, no way. I'm getting the heck out of Josh. I'm like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving Eden. I'm giving out of Eden. Um, but then I visited the campus and, and fell in love. Um, it's an unbelievably gorgeous campus. Um, and I saw myself, I knew I would not be successful in a, um, like at an Ohio state or, you know, a right state, um, just at a class that has, you know, at a school that has a class size of, you know, 150 to 80. So, um, the small classroom size also really drew me. The main thing was the campus, but, um, the whole division three liberal arts small classroom size also really drew me there. So. Yeah. So, um, like you said, I had a head to head collision and, um, I had to go get a CT scan and they found something and I didn't know what it was at first. They were like, Oh, it might be a brain bleed. And I'm like, Oh, that's all pretty serious. Um, so they, 
transferred me to a different hospital that could handle that kind of things. And they were like, oh, no, it's just this thing that we're not sure of. And I went back six months later and had actually grown. Um, so they decided to take it out in May of 2011. And um, it was ended up being a brain tumor. Um, so I had to go through six weeks of radiation and a year of um, chemo pills. So that took me out of the soccer season for the following year. So um, I did what they call a medical hardship my junior year. Um, I still was a part of the team, which was unbelievable. I can't tell you how much that meant to still be um, a part of the team and be able to practice with the team and, you know, still be involved with the team. That meant more than anything to me because I always knew I wanted to come back. Like, yeah, this really sucks and I have to go through all this crap, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop playing soccer. Um, so I was really grateful and happy that I was still part of the team, um, which was absolutely incredible. So, um, as far as it affecting my life, yeah, it was something that I had to get through and I wasn't just going to roll over and let it happen. So, um, I went through all that stuff and, um, sounds super cliche, but I'm just super grateful for everything that I have. You know, I have, I'm married to a wonderful man that I met at Wittenberg, Tiger Up. Um, and I have a baby, I have a two and a half year old. Um, I'm pregnant with baby number two right now. So, um, it's just been a pretty incredible experience. The, the whole thing of it. I'm grateful for having a good job being still having a job with this COVID thing going on. Um, and, um, having a good house to live in and just grateful for the education I got at Wittenberg that provided me with this great job that I have now as an, um, fifth grade teacher. So, um, just really grateful and happy for, you know, everything that I had to go through. It made me stronger as a person, I think. Okay. So I have two favorite moments. So my first probably all time favorite moment has to, it's a little personal, but it was the first time that my husband introduced me as his girl at a party. So <laughs> my husband was a five side at Wittenberg and uh, we were at some party and he was like, Hey, have you guys met my girl? I'm like, Oh, who's your girl? He's like, you are. I was like, Oh, okay. So I was super stoked about that. Um, <laughs> that was definitely a moment that uh, stuck in my head and I'll have that visual for the rest of my life. But my second, probably, I don't know, I might be tied for the first, um, is when I scored the winning goal against Ohio Northern. I think it was an NCAC championship game. It was like a ball across from like Mackenzie Bolin or someone. And I was making a run towards the net keeper came out and I flicked it over her head and, it was a goal and we won and the whole team came crawling, just, just stormed the field. We made a big dog pile and it was one of my all time favorite moments, especially since I almost went to ONU. Um, Mark Batman was the coach at the time and he, it was between ONU and uh, Wittenberg for me. And uh, I liked Norm better and they had the number 10 Jersey. So I chose Wittenberg. So it was just kind of awesome to beat the person that really wanted me to go to ONU and I chose Wittenberg instead. So Love you, Batman. But yeah. So um, don't tell the education department, but my favorite professor was Brooks Hedstrom from the history department. So um, I just loved her personality. I loved the way she taught her whole history classes. Um, I went with her to on a trip to Chicago to see some amazing museums and her and I just really clicked. And um, I just loved the way her, just her whole open door policy, which I know a lot of professors have at Wittenberg. Um, was just really, really incredible. I had a really good relationship with her. Also, Mike Madison, um, the um, writing teacher. Um, I still email him every now and then. I remember I emailed him for, I think it was two years ago, about um, a lesson I was teaching to see if he had any hints or help. So um, both those people are very near and dear to my heart. Michelle Akers, no question. Um, she's just a boss. She is just fearless in the air. She played soccer with U.S. Women's National Team. Um, she always played with this crazy perm and her hair was always down, which I thought was like a total she's the man um, reference and just, just a boss in the air. Fearless, um, super tall and built and just would throw herself anywhere to make sure she got the ball. So she has always been my hero. Mostly just be proud. Be proud that you're a female athlete. Um, don't ever back down for anyone. 
don't let yourself get walked over and be strong and proud that you're a female athlete because there aren't many female athletes in the United States. Um, you're a very small population and be proud and strong of that. Um, and just make sure you enjoy every moment that you have. Um, I would give anything to, to go back and just be with my teammates again. Um, I think that Wittenberg does a great job with their slogan of passing on light. Um, so I would just encourage, you know, the graduates of 2021 to really pass on your light. You learn not only wonderful education things at Wittenberg, but also really great, great life lessons. Um, you learn how to be an even better human than you even came into there as. Um, you learn to accept all types of different people and all types of different cultures. Um, just really be that light in the world and continue to pass it on to others.